Good evening, everyone. How are we doing this evening? Hope we're all well. Uh, tonight's going to be a bit of a hybrid stream uh, because I have the Two Notes Captor X, which I am very excited to be uh, working with. And I was in the studio a couple of days ago and I filmed a video for it. And because I'm so stupidly busy all the time, I've not uh, made time yet to edit it. So that's what we're going to do today. And it's kind of multiple parts go into making a video. So I'm going to try and talk you through all of it right from the start. So we're going to use Reaper to make the demo track. Then we're going to use Premiere to put everything together. So let's roll the intro. So the first thing that I'll do today is I found a nice little shortcut in Reaper, which I really should have known about a long time ago. Uh, you ever used Chrome or any of the other web browsers and you hit F11 and it gives you a full screen? Watch what happens when I hit F11. Ta-da! Little bit more screen space. It gets rid of the start bar and all the stuff at the top. And suddenly, I've just got a little bit more space on screen to work with. Really, really nice little feature. So, I'm going to crack open one of these old speckled hens. Do feel free to have a drink along with the stream if you are of legal drinking age where you are. And do drink responsibly, of course. And this kind of mushy stream of noise that you would have heard at the start of the stream is a set of guitar tracks that I recorded with the Captor X that we need to add some drums to then do some EQing to make them all fit together. Because each one of these sounds really good on its own, but in context, they all kind of clash, which isn't the Captor X's fault. That's where mixing comes in and is a thing. Because if you start stacking things that are roughly in the same sonic space, they can't be made out clearly. And that's, that's just something that we have to do. So... Uh, this is the bass, which has two channels. The bass has this clean channel, which was actually the two notes la bass and uh, a cab M with the 8x10 Brit fridge. And I had this idea, I came up with the kind of the, the riff on the spot for the song. Uh, where I decided it was in 6-8 and did this 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3. But yeah, the the thing about the bass tone is that that's the clean bass tone, which doesn't have much top end, which is unusual for me, but the uh, output, the there's a through out of the low bass, so you can chain that with something else without it going through that. And so that ran into my new Mesa V-Twin preamp, which was through my Mesa 5050 power amp. So basically, I made a very early 90s dual rectifier and then shoved that through the Captor X with the twin tracker on. And so that, I shelved out a low, low, low end and it sounds like this. Which is really crunchy, really gritty. But if I mix that in with the... the cleaner bass sound that sounds pretty big to me we're gonna have to do some work to kind of massage it a little like i said in the mix i decided not to use the eq specifically on the captor not because it's bad but because firstly i was running out of time because i had to get everything filmed before i uh, did some filming work with Glenn Fricker. Oh, uh, announcement for everybody. Uh, tune in tomorrow for the podcast. Definitely tune in for the podcast. Uh, Glenn Fricker's going to be on the show. Glenn Fricker's going to be our special guest tomorrow on the podcast. And I am so excited. It's going to be brilliant. Uh, so, yes. The Hot Pole Position featuring special guest Glenn Fricker. Tomorrow, 8pm UK time. Tune in live. Don't miss it. It's going to be amazing. So, uh, back to this. This is the original track that I came up with. 
uh, I was pretty much making this up as I went along. Uh, so it took me a few takes to get this right, but this was the original track. I think this was my 6505, because I killed the 5150 a few days ago. Long story. Uh, it'll be fine. Uh, but I put the twin tracker on, and I got a click track, and I pretty much, yeah, I wrote this in one go. Uh, it took me a few times to kind of get the idea, and then I just let the tape run, essentially, and did an entire 60 seconds, and it came out as this. Seems that I can't play cleanly. <laughs> Might have to edit that a little. So, it's only three chords, uh, it's in C, so that was uh, A flat, F, C major. And so after I'd played that, I thought, you know what, I like this. So, what I then did, because that's got a lot of ninth chords in there. Pretty sure that was the guitar there was the PB6505. Because if I play these back, those were a, a different microphone, a ribbon mic, and those didn't have the ninths in specifically. And that's not using the twin tracker, that's actually two separate takes. So this one's really mid-focused and is going to need a bit of EQ massaging. Uh, I also decided to do a top line, which again uses the twin tracker, but I really cranked the uh, thickness there. So this and the original together. Sounds pretty cool. And then the lead guitar is definitely the uh, dual rectifier, essentially, with the gain pretty high up, but with loads of reverb. phone will be YouTube telling me that my video is live. I know. Oh, um, so the headphones. Uh, these are not new headphones. These are actually old crap headphones. These are Sony headphones. They're about £15 for a pair of these. Uh, I am a complete idiot. And at the end of my filming day, uh, I think it was Monday, I left in a hurry and didn't pick up my 650s, which I'd taken to the studio with me. So, uh, I'm not going to be able to mo make the most informed mix decisions on these. I'm going to try my best and get through this as best I can. I have turned off sonar work, so it's not negatively affecting me. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, add some drums to this, do some fairly standard EQ moves to get everything to fit, and I'm going to export a what I would call a rough mix. And that from there, when I've got a rough mix, I can then use that in Premiere, put the put the video together, and then on Saturday morning I'll be back in the studio. Uh, I'll use the monitoring system there to check the mix of this for any resonances, anything that stood out that didn't appear on these cans. Uh, then drop that in the the video, export it, get ready for upload uh, Saturday evening. So yeah. Um, it's not ideal, but there's always a way round a limiting situation. So, cheers. 
yeah, this this lead. You can see how I spent quite a bit of time. Trying to pull out uh, a take there. And just before the stream, I pulled up a SSD. Because I literally just recorded this to a metronome and not to a drum kit. Again, because I was running out of time. And I wanted to get everything filmed in one day so I didn't have to make a second trip. And so I've pulled up uh, Stephen Slate drums with the Blackbird drums. Which... I do really like the Blackbird drums. Uh, the the Blackbird Studios in Nashville is one of the nicest studios in the world, and I really hope to work there at some point in the future. That would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> a man can dream. Uh, and so, well spotted on the headphones, by the way. Uh, I picked some shells out, including a, a nice Craviotto 22-inch kick that had quite a lot of oomph but not too much uh, ring that I was going to have to fight it and so uh, what I might do now is just add something in you see there's a pretty uh, gradient on these I've been playing with SWS extensions recently and you can do nice things like that like if I select all these and go to track colour uh, I've installed SWS and there's SWS track color there. I've added a load of custom colors that I like, but there's set to color gradient. And you see how it magically just makes everything look like I'm on a beach. Really nice. <laughs> so, first thing I'm going to do is uh, add myself a little bit of MIDI in here and literally just make myself a little template. Night, night, baby. It's Ivy's time for bed. She's been up a little bit late because she uh, slept late. So I'm going to insert a new MIDI item here. And I'm just going to do one bar. So there's my kick on C2. I'm going to use snap. And we go boom, boom, tick, 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 tick. There it is. So it's quite a slow song. So that's boom, ch ch dum, ch ch Oh, there, there. So that's supposed to be on. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to just put... A, where's my crash? Crash, not, not hit quite that hard. One, two, three... Two, two, three. And they should be a lot less. I'm going to make sure velocity I can see. So it's going to go one, two, three. Two. Two, three. I'm just going to copy all that over. And I'm just going to put a slightly heavier thing in there. So I'm just going to solo this. And then you can just drag the end of a file. And that will do for now. Right, so everything is too loud. And that is fine. So, ladies and gents, you might want to turn your headphones up a little at this point. So you can hear everything. Although it is going to get louder. So I'm going to put true iron on my mix bus, as I always do. Drive it quite hard. Uh, get the Slate Virtual Tape Machine on there. That's all doing stuff I like. Virtual mix rack can go on top. It's 
some point today. Yay, I like loading times. There we go. Add on the SSL channel. New York is a console. Actually, I'm not going to add any saturation there. I'm just going to back the mix percentage off. And do the same with the Hollywood. Just make sure that it's console mode. That just adds a little something, something for me. And just on the drums, if I turn all of those off, none of these are supposed to add any volume, but the harmonics they add end up sounding louder. Add off. Cool. So, uh, usually at this point, I add... In fact, I'm just going to leave the mix on the drums pretty much as it is for a minute. I add bass in. So that's way too loud, but that's fine. Let's add re -Q. And just start with a... Uh, a Butter with low cut, quite aggressive, at about 30 hertz. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of the, what people call the analog sound is generally very psychoacoustic. A little bit of saturation here, a little bit of uh, uh, basically just different points of saturation at different little microseconds here and there, fatten everything up. you can fit more sound into the same decibel range with appropriate saturation without it sounding bad. Uh, I did uh, some mastering on an album uh, yesterday, which was something that I did off stream. And by the end of it, a lot of the songs were reaching minus 13, minus 12 dB RMS, which is quite loud for mastering, relatively speaking. None of it was that brick wall thing that you see on the top of the waveforms. Everything was still dynamic. It was just described as analog and fat and um, you know properly saturated. Yeah. So uh, let's take the top end off this uh, with a Butterworth high shelf again. And I can definitely hear a low mid honk that I really should have heard in the studio. There. So, without. Oh, that's got a real muddy honk. And with. There we go. I might just add a little bit of dingy dingy ding. Well, if you want to do a drinking game with air quotes, like I said, drink responsibly. Or should I say drink responsibly. So I'm just adding a little bit of high end here, but uh, not overkill. I just like some definition on that pick. But I don't need an overly large amount because that's going to come from the next channel, which is the bass grit. So what I'm going to do now is uh, make a little folder for the bass and put these two in it. And then give these uh, a colour of some kind. Purple. Nice. Love it. Save. So by bringing in... Oh, I'm just going to EQ the bass grit as well separately using a re-EQ, because this has no low end on purpose already. Sounds really ripping to me, but I'm going to add a high cut on here that's really quite aggressive, because as much as I like that high end, there's some stuff right at the top that's just too much.
Right, there we go. And I can hear a radio style resonance. Maybe 400 hertz? So I'm going to turn the original back on and blend this in. There we go. So there's so, so far absolutely no compression on this. I'm going to use true iron. I don't want to go too heavy on any of the processing here. Because the whole point of this is really to demonstrate the power of the Captor X. Uh, but apart from a little bit of kind of analog saturation, which is just my style anyway, um, I'm really like EQ moves there are exactly what a front of house sound guy might do. You know, like I'd like to hear more of this, don't need as much of that personally. Um, not fixing issues really, because there shouldn't be many issues, hopefully. I'm going to do a pretty aggressive compression here, actually, just to shave some tops off. Now let's bring in the drums and then just fade this bass in. another thought. There is a whole section here that's supposed to be a lot lower gain. So I'm going to slowly fade that away there. Um, it's got a snap on. There we go. Gamale. So, uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to take several dB off the gritty bass. So that because uh, the guitars are significantly less gainy there, we don't need nearly as much of that distortion on the bass to make it cut through. Uh, I want to leave some of it so that the character of it's still audible, but I don't want it to be the focus of that section because with everything dropping down in level, it really will become uh, something that drags your attention to it. Like, whoa! Okay, let's add in this first rhythm guitar now. Right, okay. This one, uh, I really had the 6505 ripping by the sound of it. I hope it was a 6505. Now I'm going to sound really silly if it wasn't. But I'm just going to make a good low shelf here. <laughs> I'm just cutting all the cack out. It's kind of a northern phrase for uh, rubbish. 
garbage. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, muck, as it were. Sounds nice to me. I'm going to put True Iron on it just to fatten it up a little bit. Oh, I can suddenly hear a scratchy resonance up here somewhere. move that low bump round a bit. So let's blend this in with the guitar and see what we get. There's still another bit in this mid-range. Bad. Okay, still very mid focused. But that might be okay because I've still got another two guitars that I need to group up and call these uh, <laughs> low rhythm. Why not? Because these are already from the amp much more scooped. Okay, I'm going to try this the other way and see if True Iron before the EQ is better, just for experimentation's sake. So low cut, quite drastic. <laughs> High cut, probably quite dramatic Ooh, as well. That was not what I meant to do. I meant to make a new one. There we go. And have that quite steep. <laughs> Certainly feels good with all that low end, but in the mix, it's probably quite stuffy. can hear a somewhere. Let's find it. There we go. Tone's still a little stuffy in the mids. <laughs> that 
That definitely sounds a lot more like a rectifier now. Let's blend that in with the other one. Now these two are very quiet at this point because the gate in the capture was on. But the original didn't have the gate on because I'm silly. So there's all this buzz and crap. Let's just get rid of all that. Luckily for us, we're only doing this for a 60 second segment. Let's get rid of all that. Hello Marty. Yes, tis beer o'clock indeed. So no, this is triple tracked guitars. This is because this is showing off the Captor X. These two are properly double tracked. And this one is a single guitar but using the twin tracker. There is still something in here that needs to be tamed. I'm gonna make it. That's better. Bring this one up a little bit. There we go, because it doesn't need to be quite so quiet when we've got one guitar player. Lovely. Now let's look at this rhythm guitar here. Oh, lots of level. And that's another one that's with the twin tracker. So this one, ah, oh, you can't even see that. I'm just going to make a load of blank tracks at the end just to move everything across so you can see what I'm doing. So there's rhythm two. So this is, let's call this high, high line. Because it's not a lead. There's a separate lead. Uh, this is relatively dry with quite a lot of room reverb. But let's just get this on the case. There we go. I can be quite aggressive with the, the low cut here and make it 160 ish dB because uh, I don't mind making it that aggressive because this is a, a high line above a normal guitar. So making it quite aggressive and getting rid of the low end is only going to help it. There we go. So that's much cleaner. There's 
a lot of quick in the middle. So this needs cleaning up as well. Nice. Also, interesting fact, out of those two rhythm guitars where one had loads of cutting that we needed to do and the other one didn't, the one that didn't was using a ribbon. And the one that did uh, was using an SM57. SM57s are not nearly as good as people think they are. So let's listen to this in context. It sounds quite mid-focused. Yeah, so I just had to uh, group all those guitars and bring them down. Uh, it, it sounded familiar to me as I was writing it. I was si sincerely hoping that I wasn't copying anything. Uh, but it's only three chords round and round, so it's going to sound familiar for a start. Uh, it reminded me of Linkin Parky type stuff. But, I don't know. <laughs> So I'm using an SSL EQ to make this uh, high line stand out without being too muddy. Because it, it works. There we go. Take the volume of it down until there. So, because it, it, it everything drops down a bit, so it can drop down by a few dB. This guitar was a bit rushed. I mean, I was literally making it up as I went along, so I'm just going to shuffle it forward a bit. Also, that note needed needed fixing. So that should be. So that should be back a bit. That should be the extension of that note. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's not the most perfectly played guitar part in the world. Um, there. Funnily enough, I didn't do any of this on purpose. This was literally just let's write a riff. What sounds do I like? Go, and it sounds like. If Linkin Park and a lot of the new metal bands played Stephen Wilson and Porcupine Tree. <laughs> Funnily enough. So it's a lot of what I like mixed into one. Right, 
That's way too loud. Oh, there's a resonance. Easy bass playing. What about it? That needs to hit later. So that guitar suddenly drops out, so this one needs to push up. Uh, not there, there. Uh, just, I think I accidentally moved. Yeah, 662, so that should be up to 662, there we go. Okay. Now, as the phrase goes, I think that'll do for now. That's loud. That's not cutting through, but it sounds stuffy still. There we go, just take more of that out. Right, the problem's the bass. Interesting. Let's see what happens if I take a lot of high mid out the bass.
uh, yeah, so, yeah, to answer Marty's question, yeah, the, these are all using the Captor X. Uh, apart from the clean channel of the bass, which was because I, I did the clean and the distorted channel of the bass at the same time, and I did the clean channel of the bass with a Le Bass and Cab M, and then looped that through to a Mesa V Twin and 50-50 power amp into the Captor X. So yeah, every one of these tracks is using the Captor X, and I'm very impressed with that. So what I'm going to do now... ...is I'm going to render this out, uh, and I'm going to call that for now. Um, I am going to come back to it. <clears throat> I'm probably going to make the drum track... Uh, tomorrow lunchtime and then make the drums hit a bit harder and fit properly with it and then do some small changes but that's what I need for now because the focus of tonight is probably going to be no I don't want the entire flipping project I never want the entire project um, I always want my time selection uh, the aim of tonight is going to be to uh, pull the video together as best I can so that by Saturday morning when I get to uh, listen to this on proper monitoring systems, because I don't have anything right now, then if I them to get out of this, then I'll be able to just go, boop, change, drop in, render, go. So... It is a bit chocolate starfish. There's probably a lot more mid-range going on in my tone than there would be on, on something like that. Um, chocolate starfish. I don't know what amps uh, Wes Borland was using at the time. It might have been a Mesa Jewel Rec, actually, which would be very in keeping with the tone and for the time. Uh, Premier, hello, sometime today. How would my approach differ if it was a different genre of music? Um, hard to say. Watch the streams. Um, it all depends on the end vision. All depends on the end vision. Um, techniques don't really change. Uh, approaches can change massively. And it all depends what I'm given as well. Uh, so yeah, if a band comes in like I did mastering on a, a very much more ambient type album yesterday, and the approach was completely different. Uh, it was much more kind of analog, fattening things up, trying not to EQ too heavily. Why do I keep getting emails about things I don't care about? Right, so uh, I need to make myself a new project. Uh, HP S uh, Capita. X and I need to add all the footage in uh, so oh yeah so that's the Capture X walkthrough because this video is going to be in several parts as you'll see so I'm going to make myself a source footage bin which is what they call a folder basically and I'm going to import a lot of files don't necessarily want you lovely people seeing the entire uh, contents of my hard drive. So I'm going to add all the video in there, but I'm also going to add in from my Dropbox the WAV files for the voiceover, because that was all done using different mics at different times. Uh, come on, brain, where are you? Brain, where did you go? So I'm going to add in the voiceover. There it is. Going in, and I'm going to add in uh, the track that we just made. So there we go. Our uh, main footage is now in there. So what I'm going to do first is look through these. That's me <laughs> kind of being an idiot. Go back to pawn now. I mean, you've got the wrong stream if that's what you're looking for, mate. So. I 
There we go. Here's the bulk of the video. And I'm going to change this sequence to be HPS capture X. And it looks too dark, and that's fine. So, how long is it? 15 minutes? And this clip is 18 minutes, so that's probably it. So, I'll drop my audio in. Yep. And get them both synchronized to audio. And take a second to grab me a beer. There we go. They synced up. Didn't give me any errors. So, I can mute the original audio. Thank God. Because the camera's got audio, but it may as well not bother. It's just there for synchronization. And let's find... I did the intro a few times, because... Uh, there we go. Wasn't great with it. So, here we are. Uh, let's just cut out all the crap from the start. And make this happen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Steele from Hot Roll Studios here. And... Why is it on a quarter resolution? Let's make it a half. And before I go any further, let's colour grade this. Oh god, you can see how I've put on weight during the uh, quarantine period. I'm going to use Lumetri colour, which I'm going to move so you can see it. Uh, da -da -da -da. And I'm going to put essential graphics there as well. And we don't need nearly that much. There we go. So you can see my face. Uh, I want to use Lumetri Color. And the first thing I want to do is the camera that I use, the Black Magic, always films really dark. And I think I got my white balance a little bit warm this time. A lot warm. Should have gone the other way. What a wally. Two stone. Woo. Right. So that's looking better. 100% right in on my face. Blah. Hello, I'm Adam Steele. Blah. <laughs> uh, still warm. Uh, but I can do that from the colour wheels. Pull some warmth out of the mid-tones so that my skin looks a bit more realistic without affecting the shadows and mids. Sharpen in the creative. There we go. And zoom back out. And put quite a large vignette on. You see how the outsides go light, light darker? Draws your eye to me rather than the studio. Then I can check on my scopes here. My face is roughly in kind of the upper third there. And if I turn off the uh, grade, suddenly that'll go bleh. Before, after, before, after, before, after. I do like a good grade. Uh, what I might do, just to make it a little less uh, DSLR and a bit more cinematic, actually, because I've been discussing things like this with Glenn Fricker recently. He's a bit of a camera nerd, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to grab the contrast and just back it off a bit. And suddenly all the detail in the black comes out. There we go. And it just feels a little more cinematic. There we go. Oh, this feels really weird having turned my my screen set up round. Blah. Awful. How do your people sleep at night? So I don't need that much of my project window, but you need to see a bit of it. So now, if I hit play... Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adam Steele from Hot Roll Studios here. And today, I'm really excited because I'm going to show you a magic trick. You ready? I'm going to combine this load box with this professional digital cabinet simulator. Ready? Here we go. Say abracadabra. Dink. Oh. Apologies to everybody wearing headphones. A third time. But that is the exact frame that I want to cut this. Grab the cap to X. And it's a really crap visual effect that I wanted to do, but there we go. Boom. Wow. So the Captor 8 plus the Cab M become Dink. You saw nothing. <laughs> Dink. 
And just to make it really silly, uh, I'm going to add an effect of a dip to white. Uh, dip. And a dip to white is a transition that does that. Bang. There you go. Wow. <laughs> and it's the the most cheap effect in all of history. But yeah, million dollar budget, ladies and gentlemen. Million dollar budget. Uh, I might come back to this and find like a, an explosion uh, sound effect to add underneath. Wow. So, boom. There we go. Uh, the vocal's a little bit shouty. The shotgun mic's a little further away than I wanted it to be because of the camera angle. Uh, so, at this point, I'm going to do a bit of mixing in Premiere. And this is where a lot of people don't know about this in Premiere, and it's really annoying. In Premiere, there's this tiny little button in the audio track mixer. If I press it, does this look familiar? Inserts, sends, effects. On audio 2, that's where we are, I'm going to add a multiband compressor. And this multiband compressor that they have... Uh, it doesn't say it anywhere. It's not branded. It used to be branded. It's made by Isotope, same people that make Ozone. And the broadcast preset, this will suddenly be quite a bit louder. Wow! So, there we go. Uh, that's turned this into the Two Notes Engineering Captor X. Whew. So, there really is some uh, kind of honky mid-range on this. <coughs> Let's go to a talking point, find it, and just dip it. ...of things, and it does a lot of things very well. It's all the there. technology that the company Two Notes have been working on for years and years, pretty much all sandwiched into one little box. There we go. So, a bit more low end, a bit less of that piercing high end. Uh, I'll have a de after my vocal. First, the most obvious thing that this Captor X can do is it's a load box. It's rated at 8 ohms, and it can take up to 100 watts out of your guitar amp, which means if you've got something that's really like a big head like this... There we go. And last but not least, uh, I use the denoiser that's built in, because the new one is a lot better than the old one. But what I do is I make it entirely 0%. And then just add the tiniest bit, because otherwise the artifacts really just kill all the top end. 5150, and you're absolutely blasting it pretty loud. You can plug a speaker cable straight from that into here instead See. of your speaker cabinet. And it will just take it, and it will be able to run silently. Oh. <coughs> yeah. From there, you can then take a line out from the back here. Well, that's surprising. Maybe it's because I've got the denoiser at the end of the chain. I usually have it at the beginning. Uh, and I've taken out that, that high-piercing mid thing in the vocal. Uh, but that... Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here. And today, I'm really excited because I'm going to show you a magic trick. Are you ready? I'm going to combine this load box with this professional digital cabinet simulator. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Say abracadabra. <laughs> wow. So there we go. Uh, so I'm going to clean the audio up there. That's turned this into the two notes engineering Captor X. And that's where the intro screen rolls. <clears throat> and that's me messing around because... So before we get on with our really deep dive on exactly what this thing can do, which is what we do like to do here, uh, do subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Uh, check out our Discord where we all uh, chat to community, and our Patreon where we can... Re okay. Well, it needs something where that is, because it needs to be kind of the, the magic trick thing. So I might find something like an explosion or something to put over the top of that, but for now... Wow! It, it needs something. But next is where we do the uh, essential graphics thing. Because a couple of streams ago, you'll have seen me making the new title cards for this. And so eventually it became Titles 2020. Now, if I drop this into the timeline just above, it'll moan about the font. 
but that's fine. And what I did is I made it so that it wipes itself in with the transition. And then it goes, yeah, so roll the intro. And so on and so forth. And the reason I edit it in a kind of a linear way like this is that it means that I know exactly where everything is. So it starts to cut here. So what I want to do is have a little bit of a gap before that where it's just me sat like a lemon uh, because that then fades over that. So before we get on with our really deep like so, and at this point I want to add in uh, the music, the intro music, the new one, which would be in Dropbox Drop Files. Am I doing a giveaway competition? Not currently. Um, might be able to do one at some point, but right now, I'm afraid not. Uh, HPS theme 2020. Okay, so that can go in there and can have a nice long fade out on it. I do need to make a 15 second version of this. On Saturday, I might be able to add the vocal in that I was talking about. Uh, this is probably going to be too loud as well, uh, so that's going to come down. Yeah, I'm not giving away the Captor X, for not least because I don't think it's mine anyway. Uh, Rabia Massad had it, then Tom Quayle had it, and now I have it. And it's a prototype loan unit. So unfortunately, uh, I can't give it away even if I want to. Captor X. So before we get on with our really deep dive on exactly what this thing can do, which is what we do like to do here, uh, do subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Uh, check out our Discord where we all uh, chat as a community and our Patreon where we can really uh, get support to make more and more of these kinds of videos. So let's rewind a second. What exactly is this? Right, so I think that is where our little demo video is going to go. So it's going to dip to black. Uh, so that'll be just a cross dissolve added in there, which I put, I used shift and D because that's my standard fade. Make more and more of these kinds of videos. So video videos. There we go. Little gap. Yeah. The intro music. It, I'm so much more happy with it. I mean, I've I've gained skill as time has gone on and doing it in front of people as well spurred me on to really take some time with it. So I'm now looking for a different Hello? Oh. <laughs> Yon from Two Notes has started a watch party <laughs> with this video, which is awesome. So, uh what video? What is this? What's this? What's this? Ah, that's what it is. It's not a picture of that microphone at all. Why are the controls to that so messed up? Uh, anyway. Uh, I'll be coming back to these close-ups. This is the beautiful, beautiful thing. In all its glory. Oh, why does it say live on the graphic? Uh, that's not the egg, that's the intro. Yes, yeah, so that is because this is an essential graphic. I can just change that. I can go like that. So it was live because then I made uh, a render file of it, which I can then use on the live streams. Did I change the live stream one? No, I didn't. I will do that. Um, but yeah, I can change this now to, to notes, Capture X in depth, 
review. And because this is an essential graphic in uh, Premiere, I can just do that. And that's got its own nice little kind of zoom in and out there. And it's all done. And all I had to do was drop this thing in, drop the music in, change the text. Usually I come back to stuff like that. At the end of when I've done a video, I kind of proof watch it and do some quality control. So, yeah, I, at this stage, I'm literally just throwing the assets in. And then I like to do a grade and a rough kind of audio match as I go. But at the end, I do watch through everything and make sure it's right. So, that's... Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, um, I did use the JCM 800, but I think... I don't know why this part of the screen's messed up. I'm just going to go to workspaces and reset. Uh, I'm going to go to the editing workflow. There we go. That's still messed up? That's weird. That bar I, I, I use quite a lot. Why? Why you do this? Hmm. I'm just going to close Premiere. I saved recently. Open it again. Because that's a really weird quirk. I've not seen before. It didn't crash, so it doesn't go on the crash count. What? Lower layer MXF XMP. I don't need that. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so, there we go. Where were we? Footage. Our company's Banter Media, so all the files by default have Banter. Uh, Blackmagic 4K as the start of the file, if you were wondering why that is what it is. Uh, so let's... Ooh, nice. Yeah, so this was using a PV6505 because my 5150, as you will see in the talking part of the video, uh, I managed to blow a uh, high tension fuse and possibly a screen grid resistor because I was driving the uh, the Mesa preamp, which I'll show you later, uh, really loud through the through the 5150, and I don't think that amp's been driven that hard in 20 years, so the caps probably weren't the most stable. Hello, Al. Uh, so uh, that's what I want right here. <laughs> so a bit of background then, just if you're asking about the Black Magic cameras. Um so me and Liam and previously a team of ten of us had Banter Media, full media company. Uh way before I did anything with YouTube. Um I'm a trained camera operator. I've been a producer and a, a director on advertisements and small budget shoots. That's why I was confident in doing something like a YouTube channel. The stuff that I really had to work on was like being a presenter and being in front of camera. Um, but yeah, b before doing this, that was what I, I did anyway on, on top of the studio. So... As someone who's always been a multi, you know, do more than one job type person, that was my other thing. Mm. 
Right. Right, that was, that I think was the the take for the main rhythm guitar, so I'm going to drop that in there, and I'm going to drop the Captor X demo track in, because I definitely don't want to hear that. So if I try and synchronize the audio of these, see if that works. It did it? Nah. Did I do a second take? Uh, you know what? I'll let it do that uh, because as annoying as that is potentially, and I'm just going to uh, take the output volume of this down because I don't want to actually hear it. Uh, that's actually already synchronized the next take for me. Uh, let's just see if that's right. Cool, and I've already graded the footage, so I can just copy the grade from my talking part over to these. It's a little cold, that grade, but that might be fine. Uh, so, let's just move the second layer upwards. You can only just see that over there, can't you? So... That's where the second layer is going to come in. So let's just double click that and just check that I didn't do another take. So, that's the take where, oh, no, 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 it is that piece of footage, but I want to open that as a source, so it's, what's the name, full name, the PV is, oh, I don't think it's off, no, why would it be off, um, Lights are on. But that's what the Captor X is for. I can do that. And I'm not going to die. Just for a laugh off camera, I tried the different attenuation. Oh no, I actually did that on the video. And yeah, with no attenuation, that thing is deafening. Yeah, it's it's subtle. It's very subtle. Um, so, I mean, at that distance, I mean, if you're really zooming in that far, like, ah, oh, he's just faking it. His amp's not on. It's like, well, actually, I was kind of miming at this point because I just spent the time focusing on recording the damn parts. I'm not quite talented enough to write whilst performing to camera. That's difficult. <laughs> I mean, depending on who you ask, I may not be talented at all, but that's a question for a different day. That'll, that's the one. Three, four. There we go. So, that's going on this third row right here. Uh, I'll have to do some sort of clever edit with this in a minute, uh, but for now, let's just get this lined up. Click tracks. Ugh. Actually really good for, for uh, keeping video in time. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. There we go. So, Lumetri, paste. And there is no slide up on the uh, thingamajig. So, how many? Yeah, so there we go. If you can see it there, that's the Mesa V Twin and 5050. And this one, I think, I actually did do the, the lead line live. Yeah, there we go. So. This is turning into... This is how my edits tend to go, actually. So I'll, I'll drag this in now. May as well paste the grade on it while we go. Let's just see if I can... Uh, Put this further back, uh, which is an old trick with the synchronization. Make sure the tracks are enabled. Uh, synchronize it to audio, and whatever one is furthest back gets pushed forward. Right, no, so it won't do it. That's fine. Uh, it looks like the sound should still be synced. And it's uh, it only needs to be synced within a frame as well. That's a thought. Oh well. Uh, not only was that never going to be in time. But if we go back to the Reaper project, we never actually added that lead line. Oops. <laughs> that was uh, rather daft. So let's... Open up the Reaper. Luckily, I've got so much RAM in here that most of this project's still probably going to be cached. So it'll load up super duper hooper fast. He says, and then virtual mix rack lets him down. Like, Come on, mix rack! SSD can load two gigabytes of samples in the time that you can load one instance of virtual mix rack sometimes. Rah. This is all because we closed it and opened it again. The uh, yeah, Pace license service, which is the uh, the iLock dongles taking 20% of a six core processor's entire being. No, no HD 650s today. Um, as I said earlier in the stream, hello, Brian. Um, uh, I am an idiot and managed to leave them at the studio. So today I'm kind of struggling through this mix best best I can and then focusing on the video side of things so that uh, Saturday morning when I'm back at the studio I can monitor the mix on proper headphones and then... This is taking forever just because of the iLock drivers. This is really, really not Reaper's fault, I've got to say. Pace license service, 20%. It's uh, taking forever. Um, there we go. Suddenly decided it would work. Uh, yep, there's an entire muted channel there. Oops. Should have really fit that in the mix.
There we go. So that that was the Mesa V Twin and fifty fifty that did the lead. I do love that lead sound from Mesa's that thick, chewy, no bite <laughs> kind of uh singing thing. So let's EQ this in. And yeah, re EQ is really good. Uh so let's just bring in a That's a surprisingly high cut for a lead, but then I'm not doing anything super low, so that's fine. High cut, really extreme. I'm just going to make sure that... There we go. There we go. So I do like a little bit more high end on a lead and a little bit less of that honking. <laughs> So let's render this again, overwrite the previous file, because this is still just a rough mix. I'm not worried about, like, oh no, you've got to keep all your backups. Yeah, you do, but this isn't going as clients or anything. This is literally version one. So let's just pretend that mistake never happened. Save, quit. Thank you very much. Bring up the Premiere again. And because I overwrote the previous file with exactly the same uh, file length, this will just appear magically in Premiere. Right place on the timeline, uh, properly updated audio file, and that should, should do the thing. There we go. Uh, so if I zoom out, hit play, oh, perfect. and that cuts there. And the rest of it cuts there. Got, got to add the basing, because the bass was the last thing that I recorded. Because you see there's this, uh, the Mesa tread plate thing, and then a Mesa power amp and the captor. But when we get to the bass, it gets a little bit silly. In a good way. Uh, there we are. So, there 
There we go. Someone want to tell uh, tell Al where my Senna's 650s are? Just for fun. Whoever comes up with the most inventive story wins. Uh, let's use that screen because that this full uh, that button next to the one the tilde uh, full screens everything. So there we go. They got covered in peanut butter by Ivy. I like that one. There we go. And if you're unsure of an answer to anything like this, the simplest answer is usually the right one. Oh, why did I leave the GoPro in shot? What a complete idiot. I think I was so busy at that point that I didn't even notice that I'd just left, I'd moved a GoPro on a stick and just left it right in shot. What a complete and utter wally. Right, so this is where I start splitting things up. Uh, this bit's going to take a little while compared to the rest of the video. Uh, I didn't film this in 4K. Uh, when I film in 4K, it's 800 megabit a second. And no, I definitely don't want to punch in the right hand. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to split there uh, and I'm going to quad frame this. I am actually exporting this as 4K so if I do one of my little uh, favorite tricks style wise which is to kind of cornerize everything as I call it uh, then that actually comes out as true 4K. So if I position this at zero zero, oh no, uh, and then anchor point zero zero, that puts it in the corner. Nobody puts baby on a corner. Uh, so if I make this zero zero as well, and then put the anchor point for this one uh, to zero, helps when you turn the scale to fifty. You twerp. Uh, 19-20 and have the anchor point as 0 there we go well, YouTube works better in 4K because uh, not only is the codec a better codec most of uh, YouTube's lower resolutions use H.264 and the higher ones only use VP9 but also the bit rate is higher. Um, you're probably not seeing the benefit of nearly 4,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels uh, because of compression, but the bit rate is higher, so you end up with more detail. Now, I'm just going to copy the motion across to this other one here, and I'm going to put this back and then go, I think it's minus 1080. Yeah, there we go. So you see I've now got three videos going on at once. And the fourth one is going to be a glamour shot of, ev of everybody's favourite. The Topito Live. Uh, that one. So sweep across, drop that in. 
a very pretty shot. We're going to have several of these glamour shots dropped on top of the video. Nope. And... In, no, no, I do want to do that, but... Uh, I also want to... Minus 1080. So that goes in the corner. Then, I want a uh, lumetri colour. I know a lot of people do their colour grading afterwards. I find that the way my brain works, it works well to do grading at the time. So that's going to be... Does a vignette? Yeah, vignette affects it, even though it's been scaled. Good. So, so this is where having a decent graphics card helps. Uh, I've got a 1060 in here, which is, you know, you can get better, but now I can have four fully graded things at decent resolution. <laughs> And it'll just about play at the same time as streaming. That's insane. So. Uh, I've got five things. So what I can do now is a kind of a, a rollback edit. So what you might have seen there is I grabbed all the footage and just did that with it. So what I can now do is drag one or two of them in. So I want that one, and let's say uh, the original rhythm as well. And I'm going to move one off to the side uh, like that, and I'm going to move the other one the other way. And there's an effect you can use in Premiere called Crop. Now I've had a lot of uh, things come in recently by email, people like, oh, have you ever tried DaVinci Resolve? Or, oh, have you ever tried this software? Have you ever tried that software? And generally the answer is, firstly, F off. <laughs> I don't need unsolicited advice. And secondly, yes, I've tried them all. <laughs> and a lot of them are good for some things and not for other things. I've used Resolve extensively on like feature films. I find that on any sort of long process or something where I need really heavy color grading <clears throat> really complex color grading with like parallel nodes and really good keying and that kind of thing um, it's great for that but I would not be able to work it anywhere near this kind of speed with the workflow that I've got which is you know things like these essential graphics with customizable text already in them and um, throwing a grade together super quick and uh, multiple video like this, which is a style that I like to work in. Well, it's one thing su suggesting something in a comment on a live stream. That's fine. That's conversational. That's... I mean, especially if it's phrased as, have you used this? Because a lot of the time, it'll be like, well, yes, I have. But when people are sending me personal emails going, you should try this or you should try that, it's like, well, well, who's saying I haven't? You're not asking me a question here. You're telling me a thing. Um... Where's the lead? So I'm going to get a shot. Uh, I think I'm going to fade over a shot. So what's this? Oh, that's me testing for something else. Right. So that was the base setup, by the way, if you can see that. Captor X with the V-Twin and the 50-50 and the LaBase and the Cab M. It's a bit much. <laughs> but that tone, I love that tone.
so uh, let's just use there we go uh, I O is the Evertune going in, uh, going to go in the telly? Um, no, unfortunately not. Um, I should really have thought ahead. Uh, the Evertune is a Stratocaster designed Evertune. Uh, Telecaster designed Evertunes have a different shape. And it's too late for that, unfortunately. But tomorrow, the new electronics are arriving for this uh old strat of mine which is going to be double humbucker and is blocked off in the back and it's got a real kind of gnarly attacky sound this thing this has been my number one axe since i was about 13 years old and it has a real nice kind of tone to it you can actually see on camera how worn out the frets are though so i might need uh, a fret job doing at some point because uh, i've been playing this a lot uh I didn't do a separate like hair dryer action test because honestly, the uh, the fan was less loud than the resonance of the guitar body. So if it bothers you, that's that's you know at that level, that's your problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, um. But yeah. Um. I was running this fifty fifty absolutely blasted with the Mesa, and Mesas are not known for going easy on power amp sections into the Captor X, and it just didn't even break a sweat. Right, so what I want to do is have that dissolve into it and out of it. That dissolve goes over a blank space, right? So I want the dissolve to go underneath. Just put a cut there as a marker. That can share the same grading as. Is it that one? Yep, that one. There we go. Uh, you'll probably see that my video editing style uh, is not too different from my mixing style where it's a little bit scatterbrained but it is in a general order and that general order is what works for me on this kind of work so yeah the um, that v-twin pedal was so good um, on its own wasn't particularly impressed but then I put it through a power amp and suddenly it comes to life and suddenly I'm sat there going Ha, huh. great, yeah. A couple of years ago, I paid 350 quid for that 50-50 uh, stereo power amp there. And now I've just paid 220 I think it was, for the V-Twin. So for, like, how much does a dual rectifier cost new? And I don't even like the new rectifiers, the reborn ones, the three-channel ones. I don't like them. This sounds a lot like an old-school two-channel rectifier. It's got a very woolly top end, it's not got that defined fizz, it's thick, it's got zero definition, and I love it for what it is. If I want definition and attack, I've got a JCM800 for that. If I want all-out aggression, I've got the 6505 and the 5150 for that. This just does fire-breathing, grah, grah, with no, no attack. Right, so I'm going to do a casual zoom in. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to move the anchor point to the captor. So I can zoom in a bit, and it's going to zoom in on our object of desire. So as I zoom out of this... Whoa, too much, too much. Uh, so, whoa, 100, no wonder that's too much. In that space of time, that zoom factor is way too high. Right, 
let's just see if I got the bass line right on the second play. Through. Right, so that's where I want everything to cut. So uh, I think I'm going to have the lead line and the bass there, but over under. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off the bass line quickly, and I am going to keep pushing in. There we go. Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to use that point, and that's going to be... Because my head isn't the focus there, so it's going to be an over-under, and the bass line is going to come in round about there. Uh, see if that works. It might be a bit weird. Yeah, there we go. It's it's a slightly unusual style, but hey, I like slightly unusual. Where's the anchor point on this? There we go. I'll move the anchor point on this one over as well and do something a bit similar on the top player so that the two almost synchronize. Now let's watch that bit back. Let's move the Lumetri and Essential Graphics back over to where they're supposed to be now because those two happy little clouds are not something that I'm going to need a great deal. I can talk about them as I need them, but you can see what's going on better now. There we go. If I just move that out a bit. There we go. You can actually see what's going on better. Any shots of the 6505 or the 5150? I don't think I did. I mean, I obviously got the, the close-ups of the, that and I purposefully did a little bit of a test to make the poor thing flash red. Oh, you can see the PV logo there, so that might be what, what I'll have to make do with. Because uh, I do mention in the talking part of the video that it's like, I was going to use my 5450, but it broke. Oh, well, got a 6505. <laughs> so it definitely gets a name check. Right, so I'm just going to do the quad thing one more time here. Uh, I don't need nearly that. I can have a lot more... Uh, I'm not finishing my sentences because I'm trying to concentrate. Uh, effect controls, position. Which one's the lead line? It's number four is the lead line. So. I'm just going to delete the lead line out of there and see how quickly this looks right. lead line on top from there onwards. The song's nearly over so this kind of
doesn't look very interesting on its own. That's the problem. Okay. That's the ending, I think. Makes me smile. So, stanky face from the bass player. And we get a little fade out at the end. And then it'll come back in. I know I've not finished. I know I've not finished. But I like to kind of work backwards. When so, like Now I know I've got a time frame. So, let's rewind a second. What... there so let's rewind a second so let and i'm gonna fade that one back in so let's re there we go so i've got this much to do um so sam battle from look mum no computer doing a ted talk earlier and what he said was strategic strategic procrastination so part of my brain was getting really bored of doing this for a second then but it didn't mean that I had to go away and do nothing or do nothing useful. I just had to do another thing. Just going to fade into this. And I'm going to do a backwards fade. Um, so I'm going to go from the cap to zoomy zoom and that's a lot of zoom in but I can do that over a period of time. Let's see how long that period of time is. That's probably an appropriate time to fade back into something else um, let's fade into another close shot of the captor uh, that one, the, the base rig there we go, the base rig uh, so that can go underneath uh, with a little bit of a colour grade. There's something else somewhere. That one. Uh, I can just copy the colour grade off that because that's consistent then rather than using my eye every time. Right. So that's when I do the drums later, that's going to have a, a proper double double double. Uh, I'm going to make sure the drums are properly punctuated uh, to go with the different sections. Like there's going to be a ride on the uh, the soft section and and really kind of orchestrate the drums, but that's something I'm going to have to do off camera because I want to really get this done. Right, so. Uh, that's going to be the last square section that little section because what I'm going to do here is 
a very much a hard cut, I think, where I'm just going to go flash, 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 of different, different sections. So this is going to go back. Duh. Next. Uh, cycle. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. So it's going to be one, two, three. And then just keep pulling these back. So it's going to go. I am going to work on this. This is going to be a bit of a... Uh, not not great for epilepsy. Uh, so this this is not going to be like this completely. It's something you've got to keep in mind when you do work for TV. Genuinely, that they um. You can have your, your TV program either not aired or like you can get in a lot of trouble. Um, on YouTube, it's, it seems to be less of a problem, but you ever watched a film where there's a flashing sequence and then you've watched the same film on TV and it kind of, the sequence is there, but it's really weirdly blurred? That's what happens. Uh, they put things through like a blurring filter so that it passes epilepsy sensitivity tests. And then, there we go. So, I'm going to change the position of these now. Right, so now I'm just going to make these a little smaller and just move them off to the sides. So this can be one, two, three, four, one, two. And then. Yeah, that's it. That, that stank face. That wasn't even intentional. That was just like. I like the riff. What can I say? So copy that there. And copy that there. You know, in audio, we say, oh, you should never copy-paste. It's not genuine. In video editing, if you copy and paste, it's... Uh, what's the word? Um, it's uh, making sure everything's the same. Continuity. Continuity is important in film. There we go. And then I'm going to paste that there as well. And make sure that goes there. Hit save and see how this looks. Yeah, there we, there we go. So let's just watch this through now. Uh, oh, there's a big section where I didn't do anything. So I'm just going to dissolve that one away and dissolve that one away. Why, thank you. But um, I'm just going to make these slightly different so that they don't just cross each other. And that one could be a little zoomed in from the original as well, but centered. There we go. Let's see how this feels from the top. Save. Give it a stretch. See, th this is how these little demo videos are made. Uh, I have an idea in my head and I've run with it.
state of that Mesa Ram. Yeah. So cool. I'm happy with that. So there's a massive gap here. So I want to drag everything, literally everything, up to that point. And that's that section of the video done. Save. Really uh, get support to make more and more of these kinds of videos. <laughs>
There we go. By having these pauses but then cutting the edit, it feels like it's quick, 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 quick. Parities kind of end. These are also both attenuators. So what you can do is you can plug your really loud guitar head into one of these and then out to a speaker cabinet. And with the original captor, it could take 20 decibels off the volume, which to give you a rough idea is, I think about half as loud, it's, it's a tenth of the power that goes through. That's how decibels can work. Uh, so it comes out roughly sounding about half as loud. Now the captor X can do that, but it can also, on a little switch, go even quieter. So it can knock, I think it was 38 dB he set off, which with a really loud amp means you're gonna get conversational level volume, which means that you can run your favorite amp, have a little bit of volume coming out of the speakers so that you can play at home. Uh, flick the switch up to the middle position if you play live and you don't wanna swamp the inside stage out. Or if for some reason that's just not loud enough, flick the switch all the way up to full, and that's the full power of your amp then going through. But at the same time, even with the full power of the amp going through on full mode, it's still capturing the sound of your head for the other side of this. And this is what makes it really cool. Right. Switch. So this is what these two have in common. This is the Torpedo Cab M. This is the latest generation of two notes. It's cabinet simulation. So virtual cabinets. What's happening here is obviously you're not using, if you're using this as a load box, then obviously you're not using your real cabinet. At that point, you'll want your guitar amp to sound realistic so that you can get something that you recognize as a sound. Because if you've ever heard a guitar head uh, without a cabinet, it sounds terrible. It sounds like this. Because... Uh, <clears throat> did I... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I said, sounds like this. Uh, that's where this walkthrough video comes in. Because at one point, I quickly hit bypass. I'm going to put this entire 25 minute thing in here. This is going to be a long video. It's going to be in a lot of depth. Because, uh, yeah, at one point I flipped the camera around entirely. Bones which I've selected and moved them around a little bit. And the gates, if I turn off the gate, you can hear a little bit of bumping and banging if I take my fingers off the strings. I'm just going to go one, two, three. <clears throat> Do I put a script just off camera? Uh, no. Uh, if it's a very technical video where I have to do a lot of technical points, then I will. Uh, but I, for videos like this, uh, will take those few seconds. I already know in my head what categories I want to cover. And I would much rather be freeform. I mean, you've seen me do a three, six, twelve hour stream. I can be quite stream of consciousness, I can structure things, so I use that to my advantage and spend the time that I would spend scripting on editing the previous three videos. Because the rest of the sound comes from the way the cabinet filters off a lot of that horrible top end, gives you some of this kind of low range thumb and clarity and whatever it is that your particular cabinet gives you as a sound quality. Now the cab M is designed to either run just a preamp, which doesn't have the power section, into it, or run something like a load box, like the captor, and then run that into here. So that's where the Captor X fuses all of this into one box. Cut the crap. Next. Oh, no. Don't cut all the crap. <laughs> on the back, it's got this red speaker in jack, which has got a red knot on there so that it makes it very obvious. That's why you should stick the speaker in, because the speaker in is so high-powered that it's not the wrong connection, something could go bang. Right. That was a talk about this red switch on the back. So... Well, that's it. Quick clickbaity videos are great for a lot of people. I often get complaints about, oh, well, you should, you talk too much. It's like, no, you don't listen enough. You know, I do things my way, pal. Thanks. You know, if you want a quick video, that's okay. Fluff is there for you. He makes these five, seven minute videos and they're great. And I watch them. I think they're great. But if I want to really you know, a answer some super technical questions and get really in depth, those are not the videos for that. And that's not the forum for that. That's where inquisitive nerds like me come in <laughs> and start asking those questions and making these videos. Got a red knot on there so that it makes it very obvious. The box where the light turns red when it peaks. Yes, it does. And I'll be showing that as well. Obvious. That's where you should stick the speaker in because the speaker in is... But the peaks, interestingly enough, are not like the load box peaking. It's just kind of uh, 
if the the line input is too hot. Uh, and there is a switch on the front for sensitivity. So yes. So high powered, if it's not in the wrong connection, something could go bang. Then there's speaker out, which then goes to the cabinet. Currently, the Captor X is only for 8 ohm loads and 8 ohm cabinets, uh, which is a little bit limiting. Some amps uh, are only 16 ohm, some cabinets are only 16 ohm. Uh, 4 ohm is a lot rarer. Uh, I am told that a 16 ohm version of this is in the works and will be out at some point in the near future. Uh, but most amps can quite happily do 8 ohms. Usually, I've got a switch or multiple jacks on the back of an amp. Uh, the Marshall JCM 100 over there, I've got, it's got several jacks on the back. So you just pick the correct one. Uh, the BB is. Uh, switch. So I just pick what's correct. <clears throat> when. Cough switch. Da, 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 da. That's correct. When this is taking a load, uh, there is a fan inside, and when you plug it in and turn your amp on, if you're not playing anything, the fan won't do much. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, the fan is connected to the load. So what that means is the more noise you put through the amp, uh, the more the load in here is going to get hot, and that prompts the fan to then kick up and start uh, spitting the heat out. Because uh, when a volume, because when a valve, amp... when a volume, is uh, when a volume out. There we go. Just clean up my own pronunciation there. Out. Because when a valve amp makes a lot of noise, it's also generating a lot of heat. And that heat has got to go somewhere. As a side note, this is one of the main reasons why a lot of speakers... Hey, whoa. Hey, whoa. like heavy stuff like heavy rock heavy metal it can be really quite inspiring on rhythm parts to suddenly have a big 3d chug 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 thing what am i talking about here now i've got this thing plugged in the 6505 has its volume a little louder than oh did i make this incredibly in depth jesus have a wattage rating, like the old Greenback's 25 watts. If you put more than 25 watts into one of those speakers for a little while, it, it should be okay in the very short term, but what that's about is it can't get rid of that heat, which means over time it's going to get very hot, and if you've ever heard stories of uh, guitar speakers catching fire and that kind of thing, that's usually from misunderstandings and put too much uh, power through speakers that aren't designed for that. To take a 100 watts RMA. Co was saying, and the cap is absolutely fine, but if this boy thing needs attention around it, so... Look at me. Right, so that's not even the end of the video, Jesus. Um, put too much uh, power through speakers that aren't designed for that. So this is designed to take a 100 watts RMS load. Generally, that means as a broad brushstroke, if you've got 50 watt guitar amp, no problems. If you've got 100 watt guitar amp, probably no problems as well. Uh, if you've got something like one of the old Marshall Plexis or something like this 5150 is a really good example. These are rated as a 120 watt output. Uh, but what that means is that's 120 watts maximum output. If I run the volume on this, I'm going to say 2 out of 10, which is where you would usually run one of these amps to get the sound that is appropriate for modern rock and metal. Uh, it's quite happy running with the Captor X. If I was to absolutely gun the volume to 10 and run the input volume on 10 and play some like doom metal -y kind of thing, over time that might cause some damage to this unit. Be careful there. But generally speaking, it's not going to be a problem for most people. There we go. I do play this at double speed a lot just to get so I'm not spending so long watching it. Problem for most people. Now, unlike some of Two Notes' older units, like the Torpedo Live, which was like a rack-mounted older version of this in the Torpedo Studio, uh, the Captor doesn't have a screen. This is something that uh, struck me as a little odd at first. Then I started to thought about it. And the reason that this isn't so much of a problem now is that this whole thing is is that this is remote controllable, not just by USB to change everything. It's also got a MIDI input, so if you've got a pedal board one of those MIDI switches, like one of the Boss, I think it's ES8, or something like a Gig Rig G2, you can change what cabinet like one of the boss, I think it's ES8, or something like a Gig Rig G2, you can change what cabinet I use it. I just the button. And there's also a preset switch on the front with knobs. So if I was to set six different presets that I knew I might use commonly or during the gig, because this can hold way more than six presets. But if I had the first six as recoverings, I just go to the show and just move it to both of them. Awesome. Uh, these are controllable by your phone. Uh, now there's an iOS app, there's an Android app as well. You can connect by Bluetooth to it, and you can change anything you want remotely without having to have a screen in the unit, because you can see it nice and clearly on a much bigger, nice, colourful device. Right, I think at this point, I'm just going to quickly uh, see if I can pull up the torpedo uh, on my phone. Uh, come on, uh, get rid. Uh, uh, open up the torpedo wireless on my phone. I know, I know I'm on my phone on stream. How rude of me, I do apologise. But I'm pulling up. There we go. Oh, it says no torpedo connected. Guys, why you do this to me? Uh, but I'll just 
take a screenshot of that and use the magic wonder of Dropbox. And using the magic wonder of Dropbox. Uh, camera upload. I should have. Oh, it's download me some stuff. Come on, Dropbox. Don't fail me now. I don't need a million things uploading. I just need this one file downloading. Right, there we go. Pause. And drop this in here. Ah, I've got to have that not paused because there's this offline cloud thingy. So if I do that, that should download it. I can then add that in. There we go. Then I can pause the downloads again because that's now. There we go. I can put that over there and that'll do nicely without having to have a screen in the unit because you can see everything nice and clearly on a much bigger computer. there we go well you can connect my bluetooth to it and you can change anything you want remotely without having to have a screen in the unit because you can see everything nice and clearly on a much bigger nice colorful device now i was going to show you a demo of this using the pd5150 but unfortunately i blew it up i used a, a mesa pre-amped into it ran it all the way full volume like i was saying and the capture was absolutely fine but i think this poor aged thing needs a bit of attention from an architect so luckily for me I'm just using the uh, there we go. I'm just gonna take that's that's just dead space. That little moment there. So, little comedy moment needs a bit of attention from an amp tech. So, luckily for me, I can just use the sixty five oh five. Right. So that's gonna fade to black. Uh, that was that file so there's another 11 minutes christ on a bicycle uh but that also means that is that oh right okay so there's now two files for this i can't remember why but what i'm gonna do is synchronize these two There we go. So that's now synced up the audio with the video and I'm leaning on the trackpad. That's most annoying. And I can copy the grade from there to there. And wherever that WAV file starts, that is the start of the WAV file. I can line up that. There we go. It's going to be noisy. <laughs> Yeah. That sounds awesome. But without the shotgun mic on that. That's just the Captor X. That's nice. Now I've got this thing plugged in. The 6505 has its volume a little louder than I would usually have it. Right. So... Let's just uh, select these two. Oh no, I'm not going to link them because that would be uh, annoying. What's on my audio track mixer? Is there anything on three? No, three is good. So that can just move up. Uh, and this lot can go over here. So this is where the practical demonstration begins. So fade out. D505. Now I've got. So there's a weird breath there that can just go. It's the 6505. Now I've got this thing plugged in. The 6505 has its volume a little louder than I would usually have it. Um, I'm going to try playing this at full volume just for a second. So that's, with no microphones on the cab, this is probably going to clip the hell out of this mic. And as you can see, it did. I'm going to turn this down by about 20 dB and hope that's enough and cause a lot of feedback yeah that's what 
and this is where I'll put an essential graphic in saying there we go this is the other thing about essential graphics is you notice as I type the entire graphic gets loud larger it's dynamically shaped to the text There we go. Yeah, that was like, you can see me blinking there. Yeah, that yeah, amp that was so genuinely brain achingly loud. That's way too loud. And that's way too loud for most stages, but it sounds great. So if I step that down, to 20 dB attenuation, this is still going to be loud. But you can't hear me above that, really. Right, so uh, I'm just going to take this gain down by 10, because it still proves a point. <laughs> But it's, you can't hear me above that, really. I said you can't hear me above that, really, because it's blasting. No. Uh, I'm going to copy that graphic that I made over here and just... Uh... Oh, QODB. can't hear me above that really. That does sound beautiful. I said you can't hear me above that really because it's blasting. Now, depending on what I want to do, if I go for the lowest attenuation, which is minus 38, that... That is the volume of the cabinet and the volume of a little bit coming through the monitors all at the same time. See, I can, I can talk over that, and you can probably make me out over that if I speak up a bit. If I turn off these entirely so it's just the cabinet, you can definitely hear me over that. So I can have just a little bit of volume coming through the cabinet. Maybe I might start doing this in the live room, actually, because then I can have a guitarist sat next to the cabinet. They get a little bit of sound. And that means that they can have a little bit of comfort to the side of them. They can feel it going. We can have an absolutely roaring tone in here. And not even have to use any cabinets. So now let's turn the camera around. And let's look at how this all works. Right. This is where this is going to become a really long video now. So at this point I drop in. Capture X walkthrough.mp4. Uh, and I'll take that down one. Let's see. Again. Alright, let's try this action in three, two, one. There we go. So, what I did for this part is I captured this with OBS. Um, it looks like I need to do a little grading. Uh, this is still quite warm. A little green looking actually, so I'll just change the magenta a little bit there. Give this a nice vignette so it all looks cosy, because that's the studio as seen from the console. 
all the, the camera lights and camera itself are all magically gone. How about that? That's how this all works. So I've turned the camera around now. And we've got the Mesa V-Twin preamp and 50-50 power amp, which is when combined, essentially a dual rectifier, essentially. And that's all feeding into the Torpedo Captor X. And you can hear, there's not a lot of background noise, which is ridiculous right now that it's got this much gain. And there's a reason for that. Let's switch the camera so you can see the screen. This is the Torpedo Remote. And feature number one down here is the wonderful gate. If I do this, if I do this, you can hear lots and lots of gain. And there's nothing on right now, apart from the cabinet, obviously. And two microphones, which I've selected and moved them around a little bit. And the gate, if I turn off the gate, you can hear a little bit of bumping and banging. If I take my fingers off the strings, you get a lot of noise. If I turn on the gate and adjust the threshold from noise to not noise. <laughs> really tighten that up and if I go for the hard gate which is very metal gate it's got real tight open and close definitely comes into play when you use it like a cheap screamer in front of a heavy amp and you've got so many gain stages it can get a bit crazy but then of course you've got your microphones if I bypass those this is how it sounds with no cabinet horrible right that's what I wanted I'm just going to copy that and move back over there's a little blank space somewhere where I said, this is how it sounds without an amp. There we go. Yeah. So I don't need that much. I can just prove the point there. Oh, boy. Um, let's undo all of that. And make sure that paste doesn't paste over. Audio 1. And audio 2. There we go. And that should do us much better. Because the rest of the sound comes from the way the cabinet... Because the rest of the sound comes from the way the cabinet... I'm just going to make it a little low, low, louder. Because the next gen cap to Y will have the... The reload integrated well the only thing it's missing from the reload now really speaking is the reamp which is doable in that space and the power amp which is probably not doable in that space but huh, you never know i mean as power amps get more efficient and smaller meh horrible but what i can do instead is just mute one of these and just have one microphone and do the other way around as well you always get a choice of eight microphones. That's different depending on which cabinet you buy. Uh, there are loads you can get, including, of course, my own shameless plug. And this cabinet is exactly the one you will have seen next to me right here. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> and from here, we can start looking at some of really cool features. Ever the sales. Uh, there's only one guitarist. Steel. But it's huge. This is where the twin tracker comes in, because I can go from this to this. And that has balance, which is literally left and right. And that has balance, which is literally left and right. So if you're running uh, a rig through two, uh, two different output devices, you can change the, the volume relation there, uh, which might be really useful if you're running this into like a, a secondary amp or something crazy like that. You don't want it to come out like quite loud. The tightness control there looks like it changes things from just a little bit of delay on the right side, so it's almost mono, but not quite. All the way around the other side, there's a big delay. Which sounds really, really loose, but sounds about my wide. Personally, I prefer the tightness. Over on this kind of 30, 20, 30 percentage things again. <laughs> of course, in the studio, if you have the option of recording a left channel and a right channel, you very definitely can. But quite often, either the twin track is a really cool effect you can use, or um, what it does is it actually delays the right hand side. So if you decide later on that you don't want the uh, effect uh, at all, that you change your mind, you can just change the input for that guitar that you recorded to be a left channel. And hey, presto, back to being a mono guitar. So I'm going to turn this off for a second. I mean, I've gone for a heavy sound here, but if I wanted to, I can go to something a little cleaner. Ooh. 
Oops. Yes, this is actually what the clean sound sounds like on an old recto. They just don't really do clean clean. But with the less output. So now it's quite like personally. But uh, that's a thing for another day. Uh, now we can start looking at some cool new features. The EQ is exactly what it says. On guitar mode, the frequencies are directed to be uh, appropriate for metals. Let's just get rid of that little uh, phone check. <laughs> Directed to be appropriate for metal, so you've got like low bass, kind of low mid, honky body, so I can really scoop some up. Probably more appropriate when I have on this. I can use 2k to push up some fizziness, or 6k for that real end, and change those out to taste. If this was bass mode, it's just different EQ points, focusing more on the super low end, and then custom is very clever, and I tend to use the custom mode if I'm going to use it at all, because it's got a super low cut, uh, so I can take out things from 100 hertz down, which for recording is really, really useful because it needs to be it out later. It doesn't sound quite as thumpy with the EQ off. It doesn't need a little bit of work in a studio mixing context because to a point low end is not our friend in the studio, especially on guitars, but that's, that's a separate thing. Uh, now, reverb, this is where it gets really cool because uh, this reverb is stereo and there's room and there's ambience. So the room you can hear in stereo is very much a short, early reflections type of reverb, which really is designed not to be a noticeable reverb, but to sit you in a space. So with this on, there's a dry light, of course, and if I reach over, uh, I can change the space knob. And you can actually see the space knob and the dry wet are both changing as I'm moving this with my left hand. So I'm going all the way left, all the way right. So I can go without changing anything physically on the screen. I can go from this to this and anywhere in between. So that's a bit much. But if I change to the ambience mode, that's much longer. And that can give you that real hair in the wind solo kind of tone. So you can change the size of that reverb to be a little smaller. The echo is a different parameter entirely, which is more to do with echo time. Uh, color is to do with diffusion, I think. So you can make it more like that reverb again, or really kind of expand it out a bit. And then with this, what it says, you can have a mono reverb so it doesn't stand out. I mean, here's an interesting thing while I'm talking about the stereo on this. This is technically a stereo unit, this low box, because it has the twin tracker and it has the stereo reverb, but it does only accept a mono input. It's designed to run with one amp because it's only got one load, one load box. Uh, but for what these cost, I mean, these cost about half as much as something like an Oxbox or a, a Wiser Expander. So you can actually, if you really want to run two amps, just buy two of these. And yeah, that's a lot of money at that point. But if that's what you really want to do, is you really want stereo valve sound. Hey, you know. Epic. So if I back that back off. I do. Uh, I did not test the uh, MIDI Dinter Jack, but it comes. It does come with it. It comes with. Yeah. It's a MIDI DIN to jack, so it's got a really tiny little jack thing. A lot of the new boss pedals have the same thing, which is great because that means that that converter is going to be really common, so if you lose it or break it, it's not going to be expensive to buy another one. Um, no, I didn't test that, but I have tested the MIDI on previous two notes units, and it does what it says. It, you put in a program change or a CC change, and it, it, it changes... There's not really a lot to talk about there. It just does what it's told. Uh, which, if you've got, although I mentioned it in the the video, so I've, I've at least covered it. You like to have some room reverb in my guitar tones, but just a small amount. And the EQ, let's leave that flat. I can always tweak that. But the enhancer is where it gets really cool for me. Uh, so I'm going to start with this all the way dry and bring some of this stuff in there. I'm going to leave these at the bottom because this is designed to be a parallel process. This is where it gets really clever. So the enhancer used to be low and high, and I personally never really liked it. Um, I'm guessing anyone who's used 2 note stuff before, that may not have been their experience, they may have liked it, but the, uh, the new uh, body thickness and brilliance absolutely sell it for me. So thickness is not the same as just bumping up a low on the EQ. Listen to this. So this is already quite a thick tone. If I pull the thickness to so 50%, that's overkill, but listen. It does a certain, certain thing, a certain thing. It does a certain thing that's rather dynamic. And the low end kind of thump, thump, thumps. So what I could do, have the thickness, then this is off for a second, and listen to this. And so if I bring in the thickness, it's got a little too much on the low end, I'll turn on the EQ and shelve out some of this ultra low. So suddenly, it's gone from this, which is nice, to this, which for me, really has a noticeable chunk, chunk, chunk kind of thing. I mean, not everybody's going to be using this for metal and rock, I know, but you can also use this on any kind of tone to get that kind of real lively thumpy thumpness in your tone without being overbearing on the ultra low end. Uh, the next thing is brilliance. And again, this is a clever parallel process where this is going to add high end, and I'm going to strike a chord and bring up the brilliance. And without. And with again. 
So that's giving me suddenly all that sharp, kind of thick clarity, uh, which isn't the same as just bumping up a specific EQ point. And when you double track it with uh, the thickness and the brilliance in the right proportions, it can really bring a guitar tone to life without any nastiness. And you do still have with the custom EQ scope to change all this as well. So if I, I can hear a specific kind of resonance. I'm just going to put a little marker here because I've just had a thought. Um, I did really like the grade that I put on. But, there we go, from there on, it looks a bit odd being on everything. So what I should probably do is have a mask over it, making sure that the... Uh, Lumetri, which is the uh, color grading, is only over me uh, from when it switches and doesn't make the whole screen really weirdly blue, which is uh, something that I would have probably caught at the QC stage, but you don't even want to get there, you know. So there we go. Um, and that marker that I put in means I can get back to where I was in this really long thing and carry on. Dual rectifier do. Around 600 ish let's just find it. Yeah, that hop, hop, hop thing. Let's just take a few dB out there, not 7 dB. That's way too much. Before. That sounds really nice, but a little bright, so I can just back some brilliance off now. Now, I know that dual rectifier is kind of fizzy and buzzy and doesn't have any attack on. That's that amp, and they just do that thing. So you do get that kind of thing where there's not too much attack on it. It's just a style. Now then, there's body. And body is a very nice little thing. If you're slamming this a little too loud, you will notice a volume dip when you turn on body. It's kind of a parallel compressor that affects mostly the mids. So uh, if I'm doing something solo so if I go to my neck pickup here, and I go... That's quite a thick tone, so I'm going to back the thickness off. And I'm going to add in some body. I'm going to switch to the bridge pickup again, because I quite often find a bridge pickup to be a little shrill on a solo. Speed solo. The body there is just giving me some low mid sustain that, that is there in the preamble way, but uh, because this is not actually using mics and moving speakers, this is just kind of making up for that and kind of meeting the shortfall and really making it feel real. So the thickness is the one that I tend to play with depending on the part for the guitar, but I generally personally tend to leave body and brilliance just kind of on a little bit all the time and then just kind of special brilliance I'm a little careful with, but body just kind of stays on and that whole thing. <laughs> just works for me. I uh, didn't actually mention earlier that the IR loader is in here as well. You can load up two of your favourite impulse responses if for whatever reason the inbuilt caps, of which there are many, 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 many. There are a whole host of 2x12s, 4x12s, open backs, close backs, base caps. There's all sorts of stuff in there that you can either, uh, that either comes with it or that you can just buy as a little add-on. Uh, but if none of them are doing it for you and you've got specific impulse responses that you like, you can load those in. And so you can play with user IRs. I don't think I've got many on here right now, but there's a Sir one, a Zilla Fat Boy. <laughs> They sound great, and it's not as if that's going to be that different from that one, because that's a Zilla cab, that's a Zilla cab, yes, they're different cabs, I know, but the, the total character is going to be there. And so you can add and remove as many as you like, and one thing that is important to note is that if you want to load your own uh, two notes cabs that weren't on there before, or impulses, you do have to connect it to a PC or a Mac, and use the top of your remote software to get those files on there. But then if you're out at a show, or a rehearsal room thing, or whatever, you can choose between any of these presets and basically turn any of these knobs, uh, and load in the iOS that are already on there, using the iOS and Android app which I've done a couple of times, not with the Captor X, I've done it with the Cab M, uh, but now I've got the Captor X, I know I can do that live, and it's very, very exciting. Now, uh, one thing that they do make up for, with the fact that there's no screen on the Captor X, is that I now could save this as one of my presets. Now, let's go part of a different screen, so if I move this over, I'm going to add this as preset 6, and just overwrite it there, because presets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, if I twist this knob that's on the front of it, it literally says preset 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, I can change all of those without uh, having to look at any screen at all. I mean, yes, you can see this, but if I was to get a piece of paper and write down exactly what presets 1 to 6 were, and gaffer tape that to the top of the cap Captor X, then I know exactly then, uh, in the middle of the show, if I don't use a MIDI switch or anything like that, which you can also do, uh, then I can just go to the knob and show, click. Okay, for this song, I'm using a 2x12 open back with this, and for this song, I'm using a 4x12, uh, for this song, I'm using a 1x12, but you know, uh, one of these two microphones could be in the back of the cabinet. And, you know, there's, there's so much potential. And chances are, I mean, if you're using this without a MIDI switcher, live, you're probably not going to use more than six presets. Because, again, the, the amount of brain power you have live, you're probably focusing on the playing and maybe what pedals are on, that kind of thing, more than you are choosing this cap, that cap, this cap. Uh, but if you want to have, like, I don't know, um, if you've got an amp and a board that's got MIDI on, you could have any preset, not just these six, 
So you could have this tone goes to this, this tone goes to that, and then that's probably the way I would do it if I was more of a like, if I played more of a like bass player personally. So this is a little weird for me, uh, but. Uh, it means that you could then plan that all out in advance and when you press a single button on your MIDI switcher that changes everything including the exact sound on here so you can do some very clever stuff in advance with preparation and maybe even more clever stuff in the show one more really cool thing that i'm going to talk about for a minute is this is some of the files from that i'm just gonna have to get rid of that oh yes yes so that should be coming up to you Here's the bass tone. Right, so there's a load of crap to go there. Is this some of the files from that track? Uh, this is the bass. Uh, this is the bass tone. Right, so that was all tech issues of me trying desperately to get that to work. Uh, for whatever reason, it wasn't coming through RBS. So that's deleted three minutes out. That's good. Oh. So it's about a mile wide, and here's one part of the bass tone. Which is the two notes la bass on the, its clean channel, uh, going into the two notes cab M with a big 8x10, so that typical clean bass tone. And then I actually fed the through output of that into that dirty nasty, that's the Mesa V twin, uh, with a kind of a bass friendly setting on it. And then that's going to the top of your cap with the twin tracker on, and with the EQ, so it still had everything set up uh, as if it was a guitar amp. But the EQ, uh, what I did is I was on custom mode like this, but I had the low end really scooped out here, and the twin tracker, like I said, was on. And so it was like uh, running that through a guitar amp, but all the low end is cleaned out. And combining that with the thick lows that are in mono in the middle. That is a really thick tone uh, for bass, and that's going to sit quite nicely underneath these really busy rhythm guitars. So by the time you see this, it will already. So by the time you see this, it will already be mixed. Of course, uh, well. time is a weird. Con so by the time you see this, it will already. Must be stumbling off myself there. So by the time you see this, it will already be mixed, of course. Uh, time is a weird construct. But yeah, there's so many features in the Capture X, I'm well impressed. Back to me, in the studio. And that will fade back in. Oh, to this. So Don't need quite that long of me gurning like an idiot. Yeah. But wait, there's more. That stereo reverb and that twin tracker, anything that's in stereo. Right, I do worry. I've selected and moved them around. And to my... I've done something I shouldn't have done at some point. Let's just see how far back I can undo. Oh. That's what it was. Uh... Whatever the selection is, I need to clear the selection. I accidentally deleted a load of stuff, and what have I? What did that accomplish? What have I messed up? Ah, oh, steel. Why? What did you do? <clears throat> How far back do I have to go? Save. I hate the selection marker there. It can really mess your day up. Even more clever stuff in the show. One more really cool thing that I'm going to talk about for a minute is this is some of the files from that track that I played earlier. And this is the bass tone. Well, I'm going back to this is the bass tone and starting the edit from there again. That's annoying, but at least it's not that far back. Ah, right. Delete. Save. I thought something was wrong. And uh, this is the bass tone. So it's about a mile wide, and here's one part of the bass tone. 
which is the two notes lace on the guitar. Uh, the instrument has M, the bass by ten, typical clean bass tone. And then I just fed the fret up into that just that's basically twin uh, with a kind of bass frame setting. And then it's going to be a twin tracker and with EQ. So it still has to be set up as if it was a guitar. But EQ, uh, what I did is I took some of this, but I didn't want to be used to tap here. And so it's like when I turn it on, it's cleaned up. And finally, I'm still close to it. That is a really thick tone of bass, and that's going to sit quite nicely underneath these really busy, really does. Hello, David in Twitch land. So by the time you see this, it will already. So by the time you see this, it will. It's a weird construct. But yeah, there's so many features in the Captor X. I'm well impressed. Back to me in the studio. In, in the studio. Save, save, save. Every egg a bird. Uh. Automatic. Automatic. But wait, there's more. That stereo reverb and that twin tracker, anything that's in stereo, there's a headphone output on the front. And if I plug, plug headphones into there, and I've tried this, it sounds, because of the 3D reverb and everything, so nice to play. And the twin tracker, if you like heavy stuff, like heavy rock, heavy metal, it can be really quite inspiring on rhythm parts to suddenly have a big 3D chug 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 thing. And uh, I've been using a pair of Sennheiser HD650s with that, which are notoriously difficult to get decent level out of. And with the headphones on this, just above 12 o'clock, that was more than enough level for me, which is good to know that there's, there's more. So if I'm using a less loud amp, uh, then that's something I can compensate for. And if my presets are a little lower, so they're not clipping, but I'll, then, and I'll be able to monitor that properly as well. Uh, when using headphones, the knobs on the front become very useful, because the output level is pretty much for that exclusively. Uh, the... uh, oh, that's... Any indication of when they might start opening things in the UK? I have no idea. I've not even looked. If that's not on, it can change uh, the reverb drive so you can get more reverb coming through. And that's all without using the interface. I can just move over, grab that, change that. And the space and voicing knobs have a nice little center click so that. And the voicing knob, especially, has a nice little click in the center. Oh, that. And the space and voicing knobs. That was a mistake on my part, which you will never see again. Change that. And the voicing knob, especially, has a nice little click in the center so that I can feel where it's supposed to be when I'm not trying to use my personal preference. So this thing can do a lot. Personal preference. So this thing can do a lot, but the last thing I think we should talk about here is the price. So in the UK right now, these are £549, which isn't particularly cheap, but then the uh, original capture I think was somewhere around 250 and the Cab M was just above 300 because there's some pretty complicated looking gadgets with a lot of features. And when you add those together, you add the prices together, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the competition for this, though, is a lot more expensive. Honestly speaking, there are two major competitors to the Capture X, and that's the Universal Audio Oxbox and the Boss Waza Tube Amp Expander. Uh, both of those are very clever units, designed for slightly different markets, I feel. The Ox is really simplified, and the Waza Boss has so many features that I think you'll find one thing and stick to it. But there's some clever stuff in there. And those are both well over a £1,000, so they cost twice as much. That's a big jump, considering what this is and what this can do. Uh, I mean, if you've got two valve amps, you can buy two of these for the same price, and you can run them in complete stereo for the same price. Or save you money and just get one. And I think that's a really, really good price point to be at. It's not cheap, but it's costed at that point, I think, so that it's got components in so you can feel safe running your valve amp loudly into it, and also get that really, really good cab tone out of it. Uh, because they could have cheaped out in several places, and I'm really quite glad they didn't, because... I've always been wary of things like cheap load boxes, because they can potentially damage your amp. Um, old resistive load boxes, where they're basically just a big fat resistor in a box. Uh, those tend to sound really sterile and static and flat, because they're not reacting with the amp backwards and forwards like the speaker does, which is where the reactive load comes from. There are all these little details that, when they add up, they make for a fantastic piece of gear. Just your remarkably transparency, uh, I've not been paid to make this video by two notes. Uh, they've sent me this... Yeah, you think I should put this video out at, at this speed and watch everybody moan. Uh, thank you to, to Al in, in the chat for that, that super chat. Every Every piece of help there is massively appreciated for review and it's probably going to have to go back at some point which is a shame uh because i would really really like it but then i do already have the capture 8 and the cab m uh, which apart from the twin track featuring extra attenuation and a few really nice features uh, i already have most of it which yeah it's uh you know it would be really nice to have it all in one box but i do make guitar cabinets for the two note store i'm one of the capture masters so this this is zilla right here if you want the sound of this that's the one that was on screen the big beast which is a zilla 412 vintage 30s there are loads of other cabs on there as well check those out if you get wall sound which is their software offering or if you get uh, top you capture x or cab m or any of the hardware that they do we sell lots of cabinets that you can buy there for that extra extra little bit of awesomeness on your sound thanks for watching everybody i hope you really enjoyed this i certainly did this is a serious piece of gear and i'm looking forward to getting more out of it you'll probably see it on the live stream because yep. well, we do quite a lot of live streams ah well. blah, 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 blah. That's just a rendering error. And I'm looking forward to getting more out of it. You'll probably see it on the live streams as well, because we do quite a lot of live stream at the moment. And we're doing a lot more in the future, a lot more uh, live in the studio. Uh, we're going to be doing more uh, live mixing, where I'm at home with the whole COVID-19 lockdown thing. I've been doing a lot of that from my home little office studio, and I'll probably do more of that, because that's been really successful. There's also a Discord uh, where you can chat with us. There's the Patreon where you can support us. Uh, subscribe and hit the like button for the video if you haven't already. And thank you, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. 
And that's the end. Thank Flip for that. And something that Premiere can do now that it couldn't do up until very recently is I can open two projects at once. And so what I'm going to do is open up a different project, which I know, hairy asshole, um, that I've got this brand new Patreon thing. And since, since I made... Oh, made this there haven't been any more patrons uh added on because i only made that a couple of days ago Bye. hey everyone that might be the end of the video but if you fancy carrying on this conversation we have a discord server link is in the description we're also on patreon which is something you can really help us with we also are on facebook instagram and twitter at hot pole studios see you there there we go, because that plays everybody's Patreon stuff for the last 20 seconds. Uh, one thing I noticed is Channel 3, which uh, hopefully Channel 3 has got nothing useful on. <laughs> well, David, if you get to a point where uh, you can support the channel, I mean, that's very much appreciated. But if you can't, that's okay as well. I said that before. It's it's It is what it is. Now, I know that dual rectifier is kind of fizzy and buzzy and doesn't have any attack on. That's that. There we go. So I just added a de to all of that live footage because in these headphones, it was really standing out. And I might go back and add a de in this bit as well. It's on the same channel, so in this instance, it's taken care of. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there. There we go. So. Continuators. So what you can do is you can build your lifestyle into one of these, and then how to speak. And the original pattern, it could take 20 seconds off the volume. Uh, where's the bit where I talk about 65 of? Tone cabinet, which is limited. Some amps are only 60 ohms, some amps are 60 ohms. I formed a lot better. I am told that 60 ohms version is similar to the other one in the future. I put most amps in the back of the unit. I'm dealing with switch, almost jacks on the back of the unit. The other two are jacks on the back of the unit. The other two are switch. When this is taken low, I put a fan inside. I will get into the mod. I'm playing with it. I don't do much. I don't worry about that. The fan is connected to the load. So what that means is the more noise you put through, the more the load is going to be hot, and that prompts the fan to get up and start to heat out. Because when a valve makes a lot of noise, it also generates a lot of heat, and heat has got to go somewhere. Just as a side note, this is one of the main reasons why a lot of speakers have a wattage rating, like the old Greenbacks 25 watts. People want to. Heat, which is very hot, and if you have stories of uh, industrial catching fire, kind of thing, that's from misunderstandings and put too much uh, power through speakers that aren't designed for that. So this is designed to take a hundred watts RMS load. Generally, that means the production of watts are no problems. If a hundred watt guitar amp, probably no problems as well. Uh, if you've got something like one of the old Marshall Plexis, or right, so that's a good place to put in. Uh, go back to the project. There was one of these. It might be this one. No, next one. Previous one. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Don't die on stream, it's not very professional. There. So, there we go. All I did to get that shot, before anyone panics, is, uh, let's see if that's, yes, yeah, so I can just borrow, borrow the grade from there, uh, is I just put this on low sensitivity mode for a second with the 5150 and just tapped the end of a cable just to get it to go this red. This 5150 is a really good example. Momentarily. These are rated as a 120 watt output. There we go. And I'm going to do the zoom in on this, but I'm going to zoom in on the red bit. And there we go. Because that will be like an angry, uh, angry Cylon. These are something like this 5150 is a really good example. These are rated as a 120 watt output uh, but what that means is that's 120 watts maximum output if i run the volume on this on say two out of ten which is where there we go so that's probably the right place for that to go in there we go and so that is a 45 minute video that's got a nice intro a little bit of talking music video Then all the meat and bones. That is going to be cool. So don't need the other project open now. But that is just about a perfect place at the end of a three-hour stream to leave it because all I've got left to do 
is like I said tomorrow, just play with the drums until they fit and then are played appropriately. Uh, Re-render that, drop that in, and I think that might actually be it. There was something else I said about... Oh no, yeah, uh, listen to it on proper monitoring to make sure the mix is right. And that's it. Hello, ladies. Hello, Mr. Cool Things. Good to see you. Um, yeah, might seem a little weird, but I'm just finishing up editing the next video to go out, which is about the new Two Notes Captor X. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Steele from Hot Post Studio. And today, I'm really excited because I'm going to show you a magic trick. You ready? I'm going to combine this load box with this professional digital cabinet simulator. Ready? Here we go. Say every camera. Boom. Wow. So, there we go. Uh, that's turned this into the Two Notes Engineering Captor X. So before we get on with our really deep dive on exactly... Right, so, yeah, the other thing I can add is background music, but again, I'm going to add a little bit of light background music at the right places, and not through the whole, not through the technical part of the video, or any parts where there's guitar playing, just parts where it's just me talking. And, yeah, that is probably a very good place to end the stream for today. So, yes, for everybody watching, big news, tomorrow, tune in to the channel, 8pm, UK time, Glenn Fricker from Spectre Sound Studios is going to be our guest star on the Hot Pole Position podcast, and I am so excited, it's massive news, and I am so, so excited, it's going to be a great evening, it's going to be a lot of fun, and there's probably going to be a lot of swearing, but never mind, um, so yeah. Hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> and yeah, uh, very much looking forward to, to my friend. And I'm very lucky to be able to call Glenn my friend. Uh, being on this podcast tomorrow. So yeah, tune in 8pm hot pole position. It's going to be, yeah, keep the beep at the ready. You know what, we might just go for a mature stream and say beep it. You know, I'd be right. <laughs> so... Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go and get some rest and try and prepare mentally for tomorrow because it's going to be a big one. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos, as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.